from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Ed Barrett at Tri-State Life and Casualty in New York. Oh, hi, Ed. How are you? A little sick at the moment. Oh, what's the matter? I was planning to go up to the fishing lodge of a friend of mine over the weekend, Tommy Hargrave. Oh, but now you've had to call it off, and brother, I know exactly how you feel. Oh, Johnny, I don't think you do. Look, Ed, I'm a fisherman myself, and when something interferes with going... What was that? I just received word that Tommy had a car accident up there. Car rolled over on him. He was killed instantly. Oh, I'm sorry, Ed. Yeah. And company policy being what it is, since he carried 70000 in insurance, double indemnity, since there was an accident involved, well, I got to order the usual investigation. Yeah, sure, I see. Who's the beneficiary? His wife, Mary. They, uh, they get along all right? No, as a matter of fact, that... Now, now, look, Johnny, don't get any crazy ideas. Just go on up there and help her all you can. Oh, sure, sure. Where, Ed? The place is called Shadow Hill, near the little town of Bethel. New York? Yeah, up in Sullivan County. The police department is a man named Skinner. Police? If everything's okay? It was Skinner who called me, that's all. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, Ed, I'm on my way. And uh, if I dig up anything... Johnny, I assure you that everything's all right about this one. Oh, sure, sure. You say that as though you don't believe it. Well, <laughs> just my suspicious mind showing, I guess. Forget it. Hmm. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-State Life and Casualty Insurance Company, New York, New York. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the gruesome spectacle matter. Expense account item one, 620, fare and incidentals, Hartford to New York. Item two, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. I swung north, crossed the George Washington Bridge, then picked up Highway 17 through Goshen with its famous racetrack. Through the summer resort town of Monticello, then past White Lake, a good fishing spot, to the little town of Bethel. It really isn't much more than a crossroads, a couple of filling stations, a general store and post office, and Emmer's Hotel, where I park my bags. Shadow Hill, however, turned out to be a beautiful summer lodge, sitting high above the edge of a nearby private lake. From the highway, I could see the narrow winding road that led from the lodge down to the lake shore. I could also see the spot where a car had apparently taken a corner too quickly, skidded and rolled over to where it lay on its side. Then, shortly after pulling off the highway, I could see something else. Another car, just short of where the accident had occurred. It was half hidden in a clump of trees that bordered the road. And as I slowly pulled up to it, a man suddenly jumped out and leveled an old 30-30 rifle at me. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. Oh, well, now, just a minute, mister. Who are you? What are you doing around here? Stranger, huh? Yeah, I guess you'd call me a stranger, but look... Then maybe you're the stranger I'm looking for. Get out of that car with your hands up over your head. And don't try no funny business. Hey, what is this, a holdup? Do like I tell you to. And be quick about it. Okay, whatever you say. <clears throat> come on, come on. I like can't seem to... This door doesn't seem to want to... <sighs> Trying to pull some trick? No. Open that door. Well, it's stuck. I guess. Right here. I'll do it. Now then. Thanks. Yeah, now I'll take the gun. Oh, no, you won't. (laughs) All right. Now. Now. All right, up on your feet. Now, just a minute, son. Turn around. Go on, go on, turn around. You just look here, son. You just take it easy, old man. And remember, I have the gun now. Uh, I'll lock you up for this. That's what I'll do. You'll what? Yes, sir. Interfering with the law this way. The law? You? That's right. See? Here's my badge. See? Oh, okay then. Look, Mr. Skinner. Uh, you look, you... you... Hey, how'd you know my name? You are Mr. Skinner, aren't you? Well, sure I am. Amos hey, Skinner. Only it's Chief Skinner to you, Police Chief Skinner. And if you think you're going to get away with this, you... 
Hey, what's your idea? Oh, Chief, it looks like you're just the man I came to see. Hey? Uh, only, uh, maybe you'd better have your gun back here. Well, all right. All right, now, you you just put your hands up and... Say, now, just a doggone minute. Who are you? Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar? Is that what you said? That's right. The Johnny Dollar? I'm an insurance investigator. Well, praise be to Betsy. Well, I might have known there was someone like you, the way you outsmarted me. Banging the car door gets me that way. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Chief. Well, Johnny, I'm, I'm real proud to meet you. And believe me, son, I'm, I'm just mighty glad you're here. Oh? Why do you say that? Uh, just you look here, Johnny, over the edge of this road. Look. You see it down there, that car? Is that the car in which Mr. Thomas Hargrave was killed? Oh, you know about that. That's what I came here to investigate. Well, all right, then. Now, you listen here to me, Johnny. Well? I'm the one that telephoned down to Mr. Hargrave's insurance company down to New York. So I understood. I did it as a favor to Mary, and his wife, on account of she was so broke up and all. Never did like her, but she was, well, she was pretty upset. Very considerate of you, Chief. And I told the insurance company just what I told everybody else. That Tommy Hargrave took this turn in the road too fast. Now, you see the turn right above here? Yeah, that's a sharp one. Well, he took this turn too fast and skidded off the side, and the car went over and pinned him underneath it, and that was it. Killed him. Well? Well, all right. Now, Johnny, I just come over here from old Doc Walton's. It was down to Doc that I took Tommy's body yesterday just after it happened. And you know why I come back here? Well, I can think of one good reason. Yeah. From something you just told me. Yeah. From what I can see of the car down there. Yeah, well, it was because I suddenly started thinking, how could a man who knows this road so well ever make the mistake of... Hey, what were you going to say? Well, Chief, that car was coming down the road, uh, down from the lodge, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. That means he made a left-hand turn right here. Correct. The car went off the road, fell on its side, and leaned right where you landed, right where you see it, right on top of Tommy Hargrave. That car is a sedan. Yeah, that's right. And even from here, I can see that the windows are all closed, except for the one next to the driver's seat. Correct. But now... And it's obvious it didn't roll completely over. No, sir. It just flipped over on its side and slid down there. And yet you say that Tommy Hargrave's body was under it. That's right. Under the right side of the car where we practically had to dig it up. Hey? Uh-huh. Can you tell me how he could have fallen under that side of the car, windows closed? Johnny. Yeah. Tommy was murdered. That's what. And the car pushed over on him... To make it look like an accident. And, 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 Johnny, you proved it. A couple of other things we've got to prove, Chief. Hey, Like what? Who murdered him? And why? Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag, representing one of the 50 states. Rhode Island state flag is white with an anchor first used as a colony symbol in 1647. The motto Hope was added in 1664 when the government was organized under a charter from King Charles II. A circle of 13 gold stars were added for the original 13 colonies. This is the flag of a unique colony and state which carried out a most noble experiment in freedom. The Royal Charter of 1663 reads, to hold forth a lively experiment that a most flourishing state may stand and best be maintained with full liberty and religious concernments. Rhode Island state flag, the flag of the 13th state to enter the Union, was adopted on May 19, 1897. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the gruesome spectacle matter. Chief, tell me this. When and how did you learn of this so-called accident that killed Tommy Hargrave? Well, from Mary, his wife. Oh? It was like this, Johnny. I was sitting down at Bob and Ernie's. And Who are Bob and Ernie? Well, they run that mobile gas station down the highway you pass on the way. Oh, go on. Well, we were just sitting there talking about the Hamiltonian and all the... What do you mean, the Hamiltonian? 
Well, you know, the big harness race they run down the Goshen every year. Oh, yeah. Why, it's world famous. Bigger than the Kentucky Derby. Yes, I know. Go on. Well, we was talking about how much money Barney Marson has made taking bets on those races, and we... we oh, well, Chief. You mean you have a bookie here in Bethel? Well, now, John... And that you, as chief of police, condone such goings-on? Well, now, we... Oh, I'm surprised at you, Chief. Oh, well, it's just a little sort of harmless betting is all. Oh, sure. Every man's entitled to a little... Well, you know how it is. Yeah, I sure do. Now, let's get back to the subject. Uh, Yeah, sure. Well, like I say, we were sitting there talking... And we seen Mary Hargrave driving by on her way back from New York, where she'd gone to do some shopping that day. She wasn't here when it happened? Well, no, sir. She couldn't have been. You're sure? Well, like I told you, she was in New York. Anyhow, she drove on up here, saw what had happened, and drove right back to tell us at the gas station. We came up here, dug Tommy's body out from under, took it down to Doc Walton's office, and that was it. How carefully have you inspected that car down there? Well, that's what I was about to do when you come. All right, come on. Let's take a look at it. Why, sure. Sure. Have you any way of proving Mary Hargrave was actually in New York? Proving? Well, no, I guess not. Hey, look here, Chief. Huh? Keys are still in the ignition, but the ignition's turned off. You're right, Johnny. You're right. This car wasn't rid over the side of the road. It was pushed. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this door open. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you... Uh, Uh, Let's see if some of this... Yeah, very good. Well, what are you doing with that handful of dust? Well, it's not very professional, but some of this fine dust ought to bring out any fingerprints on the steering wheel, and we'll be... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No prints there that I can see. Now, you're right. Chief, this wheel has been carefully wiped off. So whoever did it... Hmm. Huh? What'd you find? Hmm. Did Tommy Hargrave wear glasses, spectacles? Tommy? No, sir. What? Come on, Chief. First thing I want is a look at his body. At Doc Walton, you say? That's right. Then let's go. Well, as a matter of fact, it was I who suggested to Amos, to Chief Skinner, I should say, that he go back and have another look at that car, Mr. Dollar. Just why, Dr. Walton? Uh, Because a couple of things about this body made me, well, made me wonder... Look here. The way the clothes are torn, as though he'd had some kind of a struggle. Uh, scratches and contusions on his hands. But more important, here. Yeah? Here at the base of the skull, this mark. Up where that car is, there are no rocks, no stones, no anything that could make a mark like this. And uh, there's another on the face below the eye. You know what that looks like to me, Doctor? Oh, what's that? The mark from the butt of a thirty-eight automatic. And I've seen plenty of them. I bet you, Johnny, you're right. Then that would indicate Hargrave was murdered. And the car pushed over on him to make it look like... Yes, sir. And Johnny and me found a few other things around that car that would indicate the same thing. Doctor, I understand Tommy Hargrave did not wear glasses. No, not that I know of. Of course, Mary, his wife... She wears them? Yes, she does. Can't do without them. What kind? Well, just regular tortoiseshell, you know. Something... something like these, maybe? Well, no. Granted, one lens is smashed and part of the frame is broken, but is this the kind she wore? Yes, Mrs. Dollar, I'd say so. Of course, a great many Johnny, people... Johnny, surely you don't think his own wife... They didn't would... get along too well, did they? Well, no, but after all, when any couple's been married 10, 11 also, years... Also, she just happens to be the beneficiary of his sizable insurance policy. Good heavens, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I think we'd better pay a little visit to Mrs. Mary Hargrave... Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Many times in the history of mankind, nations have pooled their forces to exert a greater strength against a common aggressor. This happens not only in the face of a world war, but between such giant holocausts as during the Boxer Uprising in China in 1900. Six nations combined their forces to come to the aid of their citizens. In the thick of the fight, Undaunted by devastating enemy fire, Chief Boson John McCloy of the United States Naval Contingent 
distinguished himself by meritorious conduct above and beyond the call of duty. For his valorous action, he was awarded his first Medal of Honor. But a man of action doesn't get the job done because of possible awards. It is the spirit of his code of conduct that guides him. John McCloy was guided by that code again and again. In June 1914, during the Mexican campaign, when the government of the United States was put upon once more to aid its persecuted citizens, Chief Boson John McCloy was constantly risking his life. Our landed troops were in danger of being annihilated on the beach at Veracruz when McCloy voluntarily filled three picket launches with riflemen and led them along the seafront to draw the enemy fire. Though badly wounded, he remained at his post and gallantly directed his part of the campaign. For this action, Chief Boson John McCloy was awarded a second Medal of Honor. But he hadn't been concerned with medals. His only concern was conducting himself as a man should, and that is according to the code of the American fighting man. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Gruesome Spectacle Matter. The three of us, Dr. Walton, Police Chief Amos Skinner, and I drove up to the lodge outside the little town of Bethel, New York, to see why Mrs. Mary Hargrave had killed her husband, made it look like a car accident. That is, if she did it. And what little evidence we had pointed right straight at her. The obvious fact the car had been pushed over on him after he was killed. The marks showing he'd struggled for his life had been struck with the butt of a pistol. The fact he and his wife hadn't got along too well, that she was his beneficiary. And finally... There were the glasses I'd found in the car. My Betsy, I wonder if she found out you were here, Johnny, and has flew the coop. Isn't that her car in the yard? Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Dollar, it is. All right, then. If she is here, well, sir, I'll arrest her right on the spot. No, no, let me handle this. But, Johnny... I said, we... please, let me handle this. Yes? Oh, Dr. Walton and Chief Skinner. That's right. And this here is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Barrett at the insurance company phoned that you'd be here. Won't you come in? Well, Surely. Not... Thank you. I'm sorry to have been so slow in answering the door, but I seem to have mislaid a pair of my glasses. Yeah, that, Johnny. I'm blind as a bat without them. Won't you all sit down? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mary. I've been using an old pair of steel rims with an old prescription, but they look so terrible. I when, to... uh, when did you lose your glasses? Oh, I... I must have mislaid them a couple of days ago. Ha! Now, what do you mean by that, Amos? You know very well what I mean. Um, you... You don't seem terribly upset about your husband's uh, death, Mrs. Hargrave? Why should I, Mr. Dollar? We haven't been exactly getting along for years. All he seemed to care about was his fishing and betting on the horses day after day. Oh, now, I never did care about spending every summer up in this stodgy little town with all its stodgy people and... Uh, well, uh... Oh, I didn't mean you, Dr. Walton. Oh, yes, thank you. The first thing I'll do when I collect the insurance is sell this place and go back to the city where my friends are. Where there's some excitement and... Mr. Dollar, are those... Are those my glasses you have there? Are they? Well, they, they look like mine... Only what happened to them? Uh, sure, they are hers, Johnny. What? No, no, Dollar. No, I don't think they are. Uh, 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 let me have them, please. Sure. Here. What's going on here? Johnny, we're just wasting time. No, 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 wait. These can't be hers. I should have realized. Sure they Gentlemen, are. Gentlemen, please. I've seen your glasses, Mary, many times. Uh, very thick at the edges, very thin in the center of the lens. Well, isn't this pair? Well, this lens, the one that's still intact, bears no resemblance to yours at all. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait. Listen, Mrs. Hargrave. Will, will somebody please tell me what's... Listen, will you? You say your husband was always playing the horses. Yes, of course he was. But do you mind telling me what Even that... while he was up here? Yes, all the time. Mr. Dollar, I don't see what you're driving at. I sure don't. Oh, brother, this is probably the wildest touch I've ever had. What? Mrs. Hargrave, did your husband owe a lot of money on his betting? Owe a lot? I should say not. Just the opposite. He's been going around for nearly two weeks boasting about the big killing he made. If he ever collected... Doctor, let me have those glasses. Oh, yes. Look, yes. here, this little mark inside the temple. Oh, that's the mark of the optometrist over in Monticello. Here, you see? 
The same mark as in mine. Yeah, okay. Now, just sit tight, the three of you. Oh? No, Mr. Dollar. Now, you look here, now. Johnny. And Amos, don't try arresting anybody while I'm gone. But It Johnny... might make you look a little foolish when I get back. Back from where, Dollar? I'll see you all later. <sighs> well, that's really just about all there is to this case. Oh, Except, of course, for the fact the optometrist in Monticello had no difficulty at all in matching the glasses I'd found with the prescription of... Yeah, you guessed it. They had belonged to the bookie Chief Skinner had told me about, Barney Marston. Of course, Barney wanted to put up a fight when we faced him with the facts. But then he couldn't seem to explain the various and sundry bruises he was carrying around. Until we reminded him of the fight he'd had with Tommy Hargrave. Yeah, he'd killed him and pushed the car over on top of him. The reason for it all, simple. Tommy had won a cool $25,000 from him. Had threatened to put him out of business if he didn't pay, which he couldn't. So, Barney killed him and tried to fake the accident. And you know something? I have a sneaking suspicion Chief Amos Skinner isn't going to stand for any bookies operating in Bethel, New York from here on out. Oh, and Mary Hargrave found the glasses she'd mislaid. Expense account total, including mileage on the rental car and the trip back to Hartford, $148 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Kansas' state flag is dark blue, and in the center is the state seal, surmounted by a large sunflower, the official state flower. The seal reflects the history of Kansas, the train of ox wagons going west, for most of the great roads pass through Kansas. An Indian is depicted chasing a herd of buffalo, Recalling the words of the official state song, Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. For this truly was the home of the buffalo and Indian. The east is represented by a rising sun, and the promise of future prosperity is indicated by the steamboat on the river and the farmer plowing the field. Above a mountain range are 34 stars, for Kansas was the 34th state admitted to the Union. Over all is the state motto, Ad astra per aspera, to the stars through difficulties. Kansas state flag, the flag of the 34th state to enter the Union, was adopted on March 23, 1927. Now here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, well listen, I promise you the most unusual case and some of the most unexpected people you ever... Well, join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Junius Matthews, and Joe Kearns. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.